James Lynch here for Flow Combat. I'm here with Eric Anders, and we're finally going to play our match of NFL Blitz. Uh, for those who don't know a little bit of backstory, Eric uh, had been talking some smack on Instagram, says he's the best at NFL Blitz, so uh, we're going to put it to the skills, man. But first off, nice to finally meet you. Likewise. Um, for those who don't know, I should mention this before we start, Eric and I have been doing interviews forever, like since, you know, second or third pro fight, and uh, to see the run that Eric's go on, it's cool to finally get to, to meet him in person and do this interview here, and why not do it with some uh, NFL Blitz here? So we're playing NFL Blitz 2000. So people are looking it up. Uh, you can look up the old rosters there. But I'm excited, man. So who's your team? We were talking about this off air. Uh, you're a Denver guy, right? Well, I was a John Elway and Terrell Davis fan back in the day. Uh, so what's his name? I just found out that uh, John Elway isn't the quarterback anymore. So In this game, yeah. It's the updated yeah, version. Yeah, yeah. We tried NFL Blitz, the regular one, but it didn't work out. So we're going with 2000 instead. So... Uh, you were the Broncos. I'm the Seahawks, and uh, just you know, proximity to where I grew up. Grew up in Vancouver. So Seahawks were the closest football team, and they were awful in the in the 2000s, as I'm yeah, sure you remember. Uh, Waters and, the, and uh, John Kitna is the uh, is the quarterback. So no Russell Wilson, unfortunately, in this one. And you've got the ball here. Let's let's do this. And you've yeah, someone's called a timeout. Oh, let's go resume. What do we got here? Oh, we got some, some weird cam oh, camera. Oh, come on, man. What is going on here with the camera? This is sabotage. Well, either All way, right. you got you got a ten yard oh. return, so we'll see, we'll see what happens there. So let's see. Uh, let's, go right here. Uh, let's try. What do we got? Oh, nice Ooh, one. Out the gate. Okay. All right. The Seahawks go. rocking their uh, their old school uniforms too. I like those colors. The West Coast colors. Uh, but anyways, man, you got a big fight coming up here on Saturday, and uh, you know we did an interview before and sort of talked about how this all came together because you wanted to fight Elias, you know, a while ago. This was even when he had the fight booked against Carlos Jr. What about Elias made you want to have him as your next opponent? Oh uh, man, you know he's just ranked. You know he's in that top 15, so he's just a stepping stone to get where I'm trying to get. And you know, uh, I've made no that has not been a secret. Yeah, and, and what do you think of sort of his antics? He's sort of this sort of this folk hero on Twitter. You know, I saw him do, I don't know if you saw the photo yesterday, the romance novel. Did you see that? I did. Yeah, well, yeah. what did you think about that? Cause, uh, I thought it was funny. My buddy, uh, the guy, you know, he's got a, uh, an Instagram page called Mixed Martial Arts Memes. Yeah. Uh, and he's the one who made that. And uh, I just think, I think it's funny. Okay, so you you're, you're all with it. You don't, you don't get... Uh, yeah, I posted it myself. So that's, uh, you, you think it adds more to the fight? I mean, this is one of the more exciting fights on the card in terms of, um, you know, I think the, the interest of the two of you, you know, sort of going back and forth heading into the fight. Because there's been a lot said. I mean, he said that, I think he said you didn't want the fight, and then clearly you did, and now now here we are, right? Yeah, so. that, was, that was a bold-faced lie. And, you know, he got on the elevator uh, at the same time I did, and then, you know, he was all friendly. He's like, hey, did you have a good flight, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so, like, so it seems like that's just all online talk. Yeah, I think so. You know, to me, you know, I was just responding. I just responded to whatever he was saying. So, um, but you know, with the trash talk, you know, to me, it, it, ooh, let's go, ah. let's go, <laughs> let's go. Touchdown. You going for the two points? Man, you come on, baby. You know what it is. All right. Um, yeah, so, man, there, there's no emotional... No, uh, because I was going to say, you've never really had this heading into a fight. I mean, all of your opponents, it's been pretty just, you know, business as usual in terms of, you know, not a lot of, like, you know, build up or animosity or anything and heading into it. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask you, I mean, your last fight was a short notice one. We all know what happened against uh, Thiago Santos, and that fight was at 205. Is the weight cut more difficult this time around just because your last fight was at 205 and it was short notice? Um, nah, man. My weight's, you know, it's it's actually lower than, than it usually is. Uh you know, at this time before the fight. So, man, it's just something my body's gotten adjusted to, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's not too difficult. One of the guys I know you've been training with for this camp, and a guy that I had the pleasure of talking to last week, uh, Walt Harris, who's got his fight against Andre Olofsky. Walt is now full-time with you guys. I know you've trained together in the past, but he's actually calling his home gym uh, Spartan. Um, how has that, uh, how, how's that been just having him there full-time? Man, it's good, man. He brings a different energy and vibe, vibe into the gym. You know, he's super energetic. Um, you know, he's another, you know, massive body uh, to work with. Um, and it's just different feeling that kind of strength and power. And then when you get to, you know, grapple and, and spar guys that are your size, you know, it's, it's a world of difference. Yeah. 
as, as you can see, we're fourth and down. Um, fourth down and four. Uh, yeah. Um, and, and I think, too, uh, you know, for this camp, I mean, you've had a decent amount of notice for this fight, right? So it's not like something short notice. Turn uh, over uh, on that. Yeah. Y'all hear it in his voice. Yeah. Y'all hear, hear it in his voice. I can't even talk. That was brutal. Really bad play there. Um, yeah, what was the question? Uh, the question was just that, uh, you know, you've had sort of a full camp for this. So, I mean, you know, does that change things? Like, how do you structure the camp? I know you did a bit of traveling because you had to go. You, had, you were doing something in Denver at the time we talked. Yeah. Uh, man, I, ju I just worked with a bunch of people, uh, got some different looks. Um, you know, I like to be coached, which is something I don't think that athletes, uh, you know, say a lot. So, you know, uh, I just want to go around and, and get as much exposure to the different camps and different philosophies as I can. And uh, that's what I've been doing. I feel good about this camp. Uh, my cardio is, you know, is great, which I think is uh, something Elias is going to rely heavily upon. Uh, is his cardio? Uh, so, man, I, I just feel. I know a lot of people say it, but oh I honestly God. feel the fourteen nothing for those of y'all watching. Oh, jeez. Um, uh, I feel like a lot of people say that, uh, you know, this was a good camp. I'm prepared, and all that other. Uh, thing. No good. All right, I can. There's a chance I can steal that. And all that other good stuff, but I, I truly, honestly feel that this is definitely one of the better camps that I've had. And uh, I, mean, I feel more than ready, more than prepared to to get in there and get it on. Um, one of the things too, you know, you look at a lot of these fighters. A lot of them come from sort of bigger camps, and your camp, you know, is, is sort of uh, like a homegrown camp. Not a lot of huge notable names there you know what, what do you think about that because there, there is sort of the school you know the school of thought of you know if you want to get to the next level you've got to be training with the top level guys what, what do you say to those critics uh, well man you know i'm at the next level and i'm, I'm doing just fine so um i mean do you look at like a demetrius johnson who you know similar situation he's, he comes from a gym that just sort of focuses on him it's not like a you know an american kickboxing academy or american top team or anything like that um, man, but you know, I'm not the I'm not the sole and main focus of the gym. We have a lot of up and coming fighters, uh, some amateurs, some early pros uh, that are getting good work in. Division one wrestlers. Our wrestling coach actually trained with Cormier at the Olympic Training Center back in the day. So you know, I got a, hot, a lot of high caliber coaching uh, and, and training partners up there. I'm just you know a little bit further ahead in, in, in my career, if you will. And I'm getting uh, further ahead up the field here. Hopefully I can uh, get some points on the board here. Really embarrassing performance so far, by the mm. way. Uh, but, but that's okay. Uh, you know, because... Oh, boy, man. You, man you're playing, this is the you're, first you're uh, test against a Canadian this week. So, you know, so far so good for you. Um, Two-yard loss. Two-yard loss. It's okay, third down. Still got another one. Um, yeah, and I guess the other thing, too, is, uh, you know, you fought, like, a lot. Um, you know, you've been... You know, you took the short-notice fight. You have another fight here. Um, is this the type of schedule you like in terms of, you know, how many fights you've gotten in this year? Yeah, absolutely. I want to fight four times a year. I think that's good for me. Um, I would prefer to not go six months without a fight uh, and then fight three times in the last four months. That's uh, well, first uh, down, though. Yeah, I know it was first down. Sorry, I wasn't, I wasn't sure about that false alarm. Um, yeah, no, you'd, you'd like to fight as frequently as you can. I, I, I fought in a... Uh, <laughs> you I see fought, that? I fought in February and then not again until August. So, you know, uh, preferably I would like to fight, you know, every other month, every third month or so. Uh, uh, come on, player. That's fine. You're going to the same fights twice in a row. And you got DDT. Yeah, that's true. Um, and then... Uh, Ooh, house call! Come on, Terrell. <laughs> man, my turbo button don't work, man. I know, mine isn't either. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, it's not working out too good. Convenient, convenient. Hey, listen, you're, you're up. You should be happy. Um, and, and I guess the other thing, too, is just sort of uh, that you could look at in this fight <gasps> is, oh, look at that. Oh, damn. Is is that, I, I think if people are looking at your, your career, I mean, you had a pretty lengthy amateur career, and I think your buildup was a lot different than Elias. Elias, you know, only a couple of pro fights in. Um, you know, he was on the Ultimate Fighter, and then all of a sudden he's in the UFC. Whereas you, you did sort of what most people do, which is, you know, you worked your way up in the regional scene. You had those headliner fights, and, uh, you know, you won an LFA belt. Like, do you feel like that's going to pay off in a fight like this where, you know, to some degree you, you've had a lot of experience? Yeah, I think the experience goes to him, though, man. You know, he's 5-2 five and five and two in the UFC. Mm -hmm. He's fought guys like uh, Brad Tavares and Thiago Santos, and, and, you know, he's racked up wins against a lot of good guys, so... 
Man, he definitely knows how to win. I don't think that he'll play that point game with me. He might. I'm prepared for whatever he's got. Well, yeah, I was going to ask you, how do you prepare for that? Because there are fights like with Ferreira and like with Sam Alvey where he's, you know, you think there's a fight where he's going to lose and then he just comes up with a better game plan and he's able to take advantage of that. Yeah, that's, uh, and then, you know, being in Canada, i got to go out there and win decisively. Man. I think if it's close, you know, um, you know, I don't want the Machida situation to happen again. So right. I think I, it's imperative that I go out there and get a decisive victory. Uh, if not a finish, but I think I'll be able to be the first guy to finish it. So during fight week, what's sort of the ritual? How do you keep yourself, you know, I know you like staying busy. How do you keep yourself sane with everything that's sort of going on, uh, you know, with, with media stuff? You're lucky, I think we were talking about this off air. You don't have to do a lot of media other than the stuff you're just doing on your own through management and everything else. Um, man, you know, I uh, turn into a recluse, you know. Yeah. Uh, I get my own room, so I put my coaches in one room. I have a room to myself. I got my fire stick, so I just watch movies all night, uh, all day, train. I'm not much of a sleeper. So, uh, man, when I get up, I do my work, you know, do my training when it's time to train. Uh, but other than that, you know, I'm, I'm in the room uh, by myself. Ah, oh. give it up. I really thought I was going to have him. I just switched it at the last minute. Ah, Ooh, eight man. seconds. Eight seconds. Eight okay. seconds. It's not a, not a good... Uh... Oh, there you go. Got it like that. Finally, the defense steps up here. The camera's drying up. It is. This is, uh, this is prime time. You're, you're going to be under the lights on Saturday. This, you should be used to this. This ain't no flash photography. For yeah, a <laughs> that's true. <laughs> now, oh, that look at that. That was such a waste of an opportunity. Oh, damn. Interception, and of course it goes to half man. Anyways, what you do you think get, so you far? Get the ball. I mean, I, I, clearly what, I'm not. What, 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 I'm not, what, what do I think? I mean, you know, it's. Uh, it's let's cool. let's take a check. Oh, so you want to fast forward through the stat sheet? Yeah, you know, I'm, not, I'm not living in the past. I know? got like 400 yards of offense right now. Is there is there a bit of pressure heading into this fight just with, you know, you had the close loss against Machida, uh, you're coming off the loss to Santos? Like, this is sort of new territory for you, I mean. Man, you know, I think that every fight's a must win. Uh, but. I don't, man, I don't feel any pressure, man, you know. It's a fight game, you know, at the end of the day. It's very much so of what have you done for me lately. Uh, probably more so in this sport than any other sport, I think. So uh, it's definitely imperative to go out there and get a win, but I don't feel any added pressure uh, to go out there and, and, you know, make something happen. I think the fight will develop and take care of itself. First down there. How, how much are you sort of in touch with the football comedian, com community, I should say, not comedians, um, just with the fact, you know, you had such a prestigious career in, in the college ranks. Um, like, are you still in touch with a lot of the guys? And Absolutely. And so, uh, you know, what's what's been sort of the feedback on their end, just seeing the success you've had in the UFC? Man, the, the guys think it's great uh, what I'm doing, man. They love it. Um, do guys well, ever reach out to you and man, say, hey, I'm thinking of doing this, you know, I might do this at um, some point? Nah, not in that aspect, but, man, it's just... I just think you have to be a special kind of dumbass to want to do <laughs> MMA, you know, mm -hmm. to volunteer to get into a fight and all that. So, man, a lot of those guys are not really looking to do that. Uh, but, man, P Mark Ingram is probably the biggest MMA fan uh, oh, yeah? in, in football. So, man, I talk with him constantly about MMA and, and fighting and Silence means we got a big play coming up here. Yeah. Where are you going? <laughs> All right, the comeback begins. Now, I was really looking at your play, but I forgot in this game that you have to. Oh, play. you saw that. that. You, saw, you saw that from a while ago. That's away. me out there, man. Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah, that's true. Um, and then, you know, I guess just the way the middleweight division sort of shaping up, you've got the title fight coming up. Oh, I know what I wanted to ask you, too. <gasps> Aside from the fact, thanks for that fumble. Um, what Ooh, do you think of on, Israel man. Adesanya fighting Anderson? What, what were your thoughts when you heard that? I think that's the passing of the torch, man. I think that, uh, obviously, man, you know, Israel, Israel or uh, the spider, 
he's Anderson Silva, man. You know, I think he's capable of getting it done against anybody. But you I think bet. so? Even at forty three and the performance he had against Brunson, which you know some people felt he didn't win. What like, you know, what do you say to those people that are saying, hey, you know what, he's he's not the same Anderson. I mean, yeah, man. Of course, he's not. You know, at forty three, it's not, and he's been sitting out for several years now. So, um, why can't I change from this dude right here, man? This game is cheating. There's no cheating. Listen, and by the way, so people are aware, I gave him a warm up. Okay, so if this guy wants to talk about controls aren't adjusted, he had he had his chance. I gave him a full quarter before we started this. Man, all I'm saying is, watch. I go to change my player, and it only changes one time. Well, you gotta you gotta work on that. Ah. Uh, so um, but, man, I just think that how, how is Anderson going to win that fight, man? Well, that's what I'm saying. And, and the, you know, the thing is he's had sort of this progression um, in his career. Oh, shoot. Where, where, you know, he's fought Tavares, he fought Brunson, so it's, he's sort of going up. And while Silva's a huge name, I think you could also say that this is almost a step back for him. I know name value-wise it isn't, and I know they can sell it as, oh, he's, he's defeated a former UFC champion. But on the flip side, I think this is a step down from Brunson and, and Tavares. What do you think? Um, I, I think that Israel's going to go out there and, you know, get the finish, knock him out for sure. Um, Look at that. A little bit of a fluke, but I'll take it. But I, I just think that Anderson Silva, he's just, it's Anderson Silva, man. He's a, he's a dangerous guy, I think. Let's see, I'm going to regret that. One second left in the third quarter. Let's see if we can get that here. But I, think, I think that Israel gets it done for sure. Yeah, I, I think so too. Um, and then, you know, it's also a backup for if Gaslam and, and Whitaker goes down. Um, who, who are you taking in that fight, by the way, between Gaslam and Whitaker? Man, I think that, uh... Do you think, I mean, there's a school of thought out there that Whitaker has taken a lot of damage in those yeah, fights, and, I, and Gaslam I, really hasn't. Yeah, I think that, uh... But at the same time, man, he, he took a lot from, uh, Yo Romero, so, you know, I think his chin has been proven. Mm -hmm. But how much of a toll did it take on his chin? That's true. Because you see some guys, you know, they wear it their whole career, and then, you know, they're, you know, and not necessarily that he's a day too old, but that chin, you know, it's like a pitcher's arm, man. It only takes so much, and it took quite a beating against Romero. So, um, but if he can take a punch from Romero, I think that he'll be able to take it a little bit from uh, Gaslam. Uh, Kevin Gaslam. Um, but Kevin Gaslam has shown that he's got that one-punch knockout power. Um, so... I don't know, man. I think it's going to be interesting. That's bullshit. That is bullshit. You mean that interception? Look at that. Minute 35 left. Get him off the field. You smell that? That's a comeback. I just want to know what my player won't adjust. Oh, player won't adjust. Listen, again, that's why I gave you the warm-up time. Oh, can I get that, a was, that, was, that was almost an interception. Can I, can I get a makeup call? A makeup interception? See what happens there. Uh, watching any good movies, any good TV shows right now? Anything getting you through camp? Man, I watched a movie today called uh, White Boy Rick. White Boy Rick? What's yeah. It? Yeah, is it good? It, well, it's about this kid who grows up in Detroit, and uh, he turns into an informant for the cops, and then he turns into a, 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 what do you call it? Right, he it. starts selling drugs. Okay. And then he ends, I'm, I won't tell you the end, but. Um, I thought it was a pretty good movie. This game's getting interesting. See that silence you're hearing in this interview means that Man, this, I'm just, this I, is a crucial moment right here. It's just mind-boggling. Because you know the inevitable is about to happen. It's mind-boggling the amount of bull. Still get to any uh, games at all? Like, I know you probably go to some college stuff, but what about... Uh, Man, NFL, not too really, just because there's nothing really. I guess the closest team is uh, Atlanta. Right. But, uh, man, still two and a half hours away. And, you know, I do so much during the week. I think I'd rather uh, just, you know, just hang out at the house on, on Saturday. Oh. You blew it! I know. You I can't blew it! That. I can't believe I blew, you blew that. blew it! How did that happen? Scared money don't make money, man. That's what you get. Can't believe I did that. That's going to be, this might be the turning point here. Safety. Oh, <laughs> how? How? Poor progress. He even says it. 
I don't know. I just, somehow that, that happens. So, anyways, we're all kind of uh, figuring out what's going on here. We got a tie game with 37 Man, seconds left. That is trash. Come on, baby, get fit. So, yeah, that sounds like a good movie. Um, uh, what else did I watch? I watched Hotel Artemis. Have you seen that? I have not. There's a lot of stuff I gotta get on, and that's. Uh, I can't. Man, this. Yeah, uh, Hotel Artemis I thought was good. It's got Jodie Foster. Let's get that. Oh, man. What you gonna do, man? Go ahead, punt it. Chain play. Oh, damn, we got, we got, <laughs> oh, man. I can't believe this nonsense. Nine seconds, though, man. If anybody can do this, it's a Broncos. This is, this is crazy, man. I'm going for extra. I'm just glad that you acknowledge the amount of BS. <laughs> Five seconds left. You got to go for the Hail Mary. Man, I can't even change the the thing on the. No, no, you pre it's it's the flipper. To to do the play. Uh, there's no timeouts in this game either, right? <laughs> oh no! Oh, Such there we go. Everyone, read the score: twenty-seven to twenty. And I'm Seattle. They're terrible. Man, that was a good game. It's trash. Good a little game. bit of BS. Good game. Um. What do, you, what do you say we do uh, We do a different game maybe next, something like that? We'll, we'll do something else. We'll figure that out. But in the meantime, where can people get a hold of you on social media? And uh, you got anyone to thank? Uh, man, you guys can get at me at, uh, at Eric Anders, E-R-Y-K-A-N-D-E-R-S, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, thank you to Infinite CBD, Rev Gear, and uh, Vitamin Energy, and everybody who is taking time to, to help me get ready for this fight.